now that we have our site somewhat fleshed out, let's take a look at our contact page. If we scroll to the bottom of any given page on our site, we'll see that out of the box Drupal gives us a link to a basic contact page. If we view that, if we weren't logged in here, it would be asking us to fill in our name and email address. And then of course, we'd provide a subject and a message. We'd click send message and someone is going to receive an email with all of this information. Of course, there are gonna be times where you want to have different fields than what's on here, or you might want multiple contact forms. Drupal can handle this. If we take a look at structure, we see we have an option for contact forms. Naturally, that's where we're gonna go, so click on that. And so here we have all of the contact forms on the site. Currently, there's just these two. The personal contact form is like person-to-person -person contact. We're not gonna worry about this uh, for this website. This website feedback form is the basic contact form that we were just looking at. We see if we click edit here, we can change the emails that the message is sent to. When someone submits a message from the contact form, we can set an auto reply. We can also add new fields if we'd like. We're not gonna do that here though. We're gonna create a new contact form. We'll keep this one the same, just keep it very simple and basic. But if we go back to contact forms, we can click add contact form and create an entirely new form. So let's go with, let's create one for uh, advertisers who want to get in touch with us regarding potentially advertising on the site. We'll call this advertising inquiries. And I'll just put myself as the recipient. And then for an auto reply, we can say something like, Thank you for getting in touch with us regarding advertising. We will respond shortly. And that's all we're going to do here. We'll save this. And now we have advertising inquiries as one of our contact forms listed here. Uh, selected just means whether it is selected as the default contact form the link that shows up at the bottom of the site if we choose to keep it there that we were looking at earlier. So if we want to go uh, change up this uh, contact form a little bit now, play around with the fields, we'll click this drop down area and manage fields. So we have no custom fields yet. Let's go ahead and add one. Let's say we'd like to know first off what company the person contacting us is from. For that, we're gonna go with a plain text field doesn't need any formatting, it doesn't need to be long. We'll call this company. Alright, and here we can cut down on the maximum length that we want this field to be since it's simply the name of a company. We can really safely go down to anything like, well, let's do 50 just to be safe. It's unlikely we're going to get a company name with 50 characters, but it's possible. And we just want one. Save those settings. We're not going to worry about help text. It's pretty self-explanatory what we're asking for here. And you might argue that you should make it required, but I'm just going to leave that open. Save those settings. Let's add one more. Let's say we'd like to get some information regarding their advertising budget, how much they're looking to potentially spend. So to ask them that, we're going to want a, a number input. And we'll just go with integer. We're not going to worry about getting as detailed as to how many uh, dollars and cents they're planning on spending. We're just going to go with a dollar amount. And for label, we'll go with advertising budget. Save and continue. Just one value. Won't worry about help text here either. I'm not going to make this required. Uh, for minimum, uh, we could put zero just to make sure we don't accidentally get a negative value or something like that, but in this case, it's, it doesn't really matter. For the prefix, we'll put a dollar sign. Save that. And now we have our custom fields. Let's manage the form display. And this is a little bit different from how you would do it with content. With content, the most important thing is to manage the actual display of that content. For contact forms, we want to actually manage the form display because it's the form that people are looking at uh, and filling out. So we don't want this stuff to appear way down at the bottom of the page. Let's say we want it right above the subject. 
Uh, we'll put company up here uh, in between email and subject. And we'll put advertising budget right beneath company. And that should do it. Let's save this. And if we go back to our contact forms page, we see advertising inquiries still. If we click on this, it takes us to our new advertising inquiries form. If we fill this out, we can put our company, our advertising budget, then of course the subject and message and send it. And we'll receive all of this information at the email we placed to receive the messages from this contact form. Notice one thing, we were not able, and currently in Drupal 8.0.0, you cannot edit the path of any given contact form. So they all go to your domain slash contact slash a machine version of the title you give it. In this case, advertising underscore inquiries. And if we wanted to place this in some custom part of the site, we would need this path. So maybe go ahead and just uh, copy this path, including the slash that, that comes right after the domain. And just copy that because we're going to play around with this in a second. Uh, so currently, we still have just this contact form here actually available to visitors on the site. But we want to make this advertising inquiries form show up down here as well. So to do that, we're going to go to structure and menus because the contact link that we already see uh, is part of a menu. It's part of our footer menu currently. If we go to edit menu, we can see that. All we have right here is a contact form and we can disable this to take it off if we'd like to. We could also remove the footer menu entirely if we wanted to. But let's say we want to keep that and we want to add the new form that we just created. We'll click add link here and for the menu link title we'll go with the title of the form and here's where we're going to paste in the link note that currently with Drupal 8 you need to include the preceding slash that comes after the domain and then it's going to be slash contact slash advertising underscore inquiries we want this enabled because we do want it to show up and everything else here should be good let's give this a weight of uh, like five or so just so we know it appears below the basic contact link. We can always play around with that later if we want. If we want to, we don't have to worry about the weights. We could just drag and drop using these right here. But this looks good. The menu link has been saved. Let's click save one more time for good measure to save the menu itself. Then if we go back to the site and scroll all the way down, we have both links now, contact and advertising inquiries. We could also have just created an entirely new menu and added all of the links to that one and then placed that menu in a block somewhere in one of these footers. But this one was already here. It already had one of our contact forms. So we'll just put it with that one. One last thing, uh, currently in Drupal 8.0.0, there's not a way to view contact form messages on the site. The only way to view them is to view them in the email that you receive from the system when someone sends them in. There is a module that can help with this, however. To find out, first of all, if you need this module or if you can actually uh, view these messages on the site because it is something that they're planning on adding to Drupal Core, you can go to Structure. Uh, contact forms and if you don't see a messages tab somewhere around here you can go to uh, contact slash messages and if it says page not found then you're working on a version of Drupal that still doesn't have this in core quite yet but there is a module that can help us with this the contact storage module so go ahead and go here if you need to and download whatever the latest uh, green version is here. Go ahead and install that on your site and we'll take a look at it very quickly. Alright, so once you've installed the contact storage module, again, if you needed to install it, to enable that, we simply go to extend and we'll scroll down a bit here. And here we go. Under other, we have contact storage. We will install that. And now we have a place where we can view 
forms that were submitted on the site. So let's go back to the site very quickly, or let's just go back to the main part of the site. And you can pick either of these contact forms. Well, I'll go with advertising inquiries. And I'll just fill in some dummy information here. Something very brief and simple. We'll click send message. So now along with receiving an email of this message, if you're on a, a live site or some site that has uh, outbound connectivity, then you would receive the email. But along with that, if we go to extend and go all the way back down and find the contact storage module, expand this right here, we can go to the configuration page. Currently, there's not a great way to navigate to this page other than going here through the extensions page. We'll click configure. And now it's going to take us to a list of all of the messages we've received from our contact forms on the site. And here we go. We see that we have received one message with a subject advertising from whatever name you were logged in as. They were using the contact form advertising inquiries. From the operations here, you see we don't have a lot of options. We would click edit to actually view the message. So you click on that. And now we have all of the information that that person sent in. We can see th their company field, their advertising budget, and the message they sent and everything. Again, you get access to this page. You give Drupal the ability to create a page like that currently by downloading the contact storage module. But in later versions of Drupal 8, it's supposed to be included in core eventually.